Versus Fellowship, located on occupied ancestral lands of the Scope Nation, and housed in a building constructed by the formerly enslaved African Americans. My name is Terry Rodriguez, and I am your service associate this morning. Some of us are bringing our best selves to this place, and some of us are bringing our struggling selves, including pieces we might be ashamed of. All of us are welcome here. All of us are loved. Some of us already have open hearts. Some of us aren't quite there yet, because our hearts have gotten a little beat up this week and might have forgotten how to trust and open. Your heart is welcome here no matter how big. We welcome you among us. All of us are imperfect, but here we drop our defenses and trust that what happens in worship is powerful and life-giving. Together we affirm that this day and our future We welcome you here. I call your attention to the announcements which are printed on the back of your order of service. And the star of the show, <laughs> um, please read these for important information about fellowship life. Special announcements will be heard at the end of the hour. On behalf of the membership of the fellowship of members of the fellowship, I extend a special welcome to all visitors who are joining us for the first time, and to those of you who still feel like visitors. If you have not already done so, please fill out our visitor book at near the front near the greeters, or digitally by visiting auuf.org slash visitor. You may also contact our minister, Reverend Chris Rothbauer, at minister.auuf.org with any questions or concerns you may have. As you prepare for our service this morning, please remember to turn off the phone and other devices to sign. Let us move into the service. <clears throat> Willing, where's my voice? <clears throat> willing to be authentic with each other, honest within ourselves, and open to connection in all things. Our opening words this morning are from the list and later. Let go of all that binds you of all that burdens you, of what you carry, of all that shames you, of fear, of trespasses and transgressions, of woundedness. Let go of guilt. Let go of anger. Let go of small-mindedness and pettiness, of ways of being that no longer work for you, of compulsion that consumes your living. Let go of what you cannot change. Let go of regret of that which haunts you. Let go of pain. Let go of ways in which you missed the mark. Let go. Last year 
our chalice this morning with these words from Sarah Eileen Lawal. Out of the flames of fear, we rise with the courage of our deepest convictions to stand for justice, inclusion, and peace. Out of the flames of scrutiny, we rise to proclaim our faith with hope to heal a fractured and hurting world. Out of the flames of doubt, we rise to embrace the mystery, wonder, of all out there and all that is yet to be. Out of the flames of hate, we rise with the force of love, love that celebrates our shared humanity. Out of the flames, we rise. For about five years now, we have lit every week a border candle in solidarity with families separated at the southern border. Last year, the question came up, should we continue lighting the southern border candle? After all, the Biden administration has ended the Obama and Trump era policies that enable the current round of family separations. However, according to various social justice agencies, families are, in 2023, still being separated at our southern border. In addition, immense suffering is happening as a result of the continued enforcement of inhumane immigration practices, including the busing of mostly legal immigrants in political acts. As a result, well, after talking with a few members for whom this was dear to their heart, I have decided that we will continue to light a Southern Border candle to recognize the immense human toll that is happening at the Mexican border. So we light a candle in solidarity with those families and individuals separated and suffering at our Southern Border. This year, I'm also starting a new tradition here at AUUF. For many people, the Russian invasion of Ukraine was a shock, a reminder that today there are still people willing to cause suffering to others simply to gain power or land or resources. While the suffering in Ukraine is indeed bad, some BIPOC critics have pointed out that there are plenty of other countries around the world at war at any given moment. Indeed, in 2021 and 2022, there were at least 40 wars and conflicts going on with at least 100 deaths on every continent except for Australia and Antarctica. And this is not even factoring in smaller scale acts of violence such as terrorist attacks. Because of this, I'm going to try an experiment this year of lighting a third candle every Sunday this year, 
each week highlighting a different place in the world where a war or conflict is currently going on. And Ukraine will definitely have a week, if not more than one week. But through this practice, I hope we can become more aware of the fear that so many people live through on a daily basis and send our loves to those living lives of anxiety and use this awareness to work towards peace and beloved community around the world. This week, we light our peace candle for Afghanistan, a country that has been involved in some type of war or conflict every year since 1978. As the United States withdrew from their territory in 2021, fighting continues between the Islamic State and the Taliban, and resistance fighters aligned with the former American-backed government seek to overthrow the current Taliban rule. Over 2.5 million people have been killed in fair fighting in Afghanistan since 1978, and in 2022, 3,847 people were killed in various conflicts in Afghanistan. I invite you to rise and body or in spirit as you're willing and able and join us in singing our opening hymn, number 241 in the gray hymnal in the bleak midwinter. we proclaim the warmth and caring of our community is by the sharing of our joys, concerns, and milestones. If you are joining us virtually, we, can, we invite you to type in your concern and the milestone of your milestone will be thrown to the chat box during the music and meditation. We invite those in person to one at a time drop a pebble into the communal bowl during the meditation. Spoken joys and concerns, concerns will be invited following the music. <laughs>
Are there any spoken words you can say in my spirit? I just want to talk about um, I wanted to talk about how joy can sometimes rise out of sorrow. Um, my husband lost his mother last January. She gave us a small inheritance that came with it. And then a few months ago, my older brother died of cancer. Um, but because of the inheritance from my mother-in-law, we were able to offer my brother's youngest son to come out here to Auburn and help him through college. And so this month, last week, uh, my nephew started at Southern Union, planning on transferring to Auburn once he had established residency. And so even though it came out of too sorrow, um, there's hope now for the future for my nephew. Jan and I had our 35th wedding anniversary on January 2nd. Hi, my name is Martha, and I'm selling Girl Scout cookies, and they're $5 each. I'm selling them in the back. I can still <laughs> My son uh, won the, he's one of 32 winners of the Horizon Teaching Award in Kansas for a new teacher. Hey, I'm Billy. Uh, we at the Bush Center uh, last Friday hosted the first trans social here. We've been meeting at a local coffee shop before, and we had a a little group of folks, including new faces, so it was really nice to see some people come together for community and support in a state that is uh, nice to have that in. So I appreciate the fellowship for having that space available to us and to so many other groups in the community who feel they're trying to make a difference out there. I have a joy on behalf of those with the tumor sit-ins. They've been doing it now for 952 days as of today. And with that, those concerns about what is raised every time we do the sit-in, and I'm still um, thinking about that guy who was tasered late last year. I'm hoping this year that there would be justice for that. Thank you. Most of you know that my husband Ralph is very ill, he's up in Michigan. So I've had to learn to do a lot of things that he used to do, you know. So I had to get a battery in the car that car. And I'll tell you, I, I didn't faint. I did not faint. <laughs> but I, I was expecting like $65. <laughs> With the work, whatever you call it, the work and the tax, it came to $372. I could not believe it. And I don't drive after dark, but they had to work me in. And first I had gone to the old Honda place, and then I had a fun. Anyway, so be prepared. <laughs> be prepared. Be a, be a good boy scout or girl scout. Be prepared. So I made it home in the dark. And uh, as I said, when, when, when you're a woman alone now, you just have to do things that 
May all the joys, concerns, and milestones of this community, those shared aloud and those held in silence, be received into the care and concern of all present. Our moment for all ages today is led by our coordinator of religious exploration, Angela Farmer. So if all the children would come forward, or anybody else, or anybody that wants to come sit on the floor. <laughs> like step on fire, we need January. Thank you for reminding us. Happy New Year, everyone. So, this is one of our chances from. I have this method ready with me. Oh, is that better? When it comes time to blow it out, I will let you do your work, okay? I really want to do it. <laughs> yes, okay. Okay. Mike, I don't know what to Okay, so you have, I think it's not really hot enough. Hold it here for me. Did you ever watch a candle burn? You know, you just like, like to like watch fire. It's getting bigger. It is getting bigger. This is fun. Yeah, you like to watch fire? <laughs> I have the baby. Yeah? Um, you were telling me that we had to use proper safety precautions with fire, right? right. Yeah, it's very important. Um, fire's kind of alive, isn't it? It moves on its own, it flickers, and it dances in the wind, and it changes. It changes with the air. Yeah, he wants to blow on it. And it will change with our breath. Stop blowing it out. It changes a little bit, doesn't it? Fire's alive, it's warm, it glows. Once we point it out, it gets bigger. And then it dies out. And blow it out. You good? Okay. Stay right now. <laughs> Oh, oh, there you go. Fire's pretty special, though. But you can light it again. It can and then, again, even and then, and then, and then, and sometimes everyone can get a chance. No, okay, well, you know what? We can take this candle outside with us, and everybody can have a chance to blow it out. Are there things that I can do in this flame that no one else can just <laughs> yeah, that's kind of fun too, as long as you don't get it too hot. Yeah. Okay, so people have always known that fire was special. Long, long ago, people knew that fire was special. There was a great fire in the sky, the sun, which made the earth warm and turned night into day. And then there were the smaller fires. Remember we talked about the fires that we brought inside on Christmas and we talked about the fireplaces that people were making um, so that people could cook their food and keep warm and bring light. People honored fires because fire was special. Fire has power. It can create things. It can also destroy things. So I have to use proper safety precautions, right? It can bring light and it can burn. It can be wonderful and it can be terrible. We have to be careful with it. And people understand that fire is sacred and holy. Some people even worshipped fire and said that fire was a deity, like a god or a goddess. But other people said the fire wasn't actually the god. It just meant that the god was there. So no matter what they believed, people all over the world gave fire a special place in their religions. Karen? I want to hear about that because we're going to talk about places that have fires like that and I want to hear all about that in a minute. So can you tell us about that again so everybody can hear in a minute? Okay, so people have fires in their homes, of course, to 
and keep warm. And they also have sacred fires in their temples. They set sacred lamps on their altars. They put sacred bonfires outside on the hilltops and in their groves. And they place sacred torches near the graves of people who died. And we still do this today. Um, I have pictures, if you've never seen it. The one on the bottom is the first one. I kind of have them backwards. So this is the first one I'm going to talk about, and then I'm going to talk about that one. So we can pass those around. Um, in Paris, near the Arc de Triomphe, one second, okay. Um, at the tomb of the unknown soldier, there's an eternal flame that never goes out. And in Arlington Cemetery, at the grave of, the pre of President John Kennedy, there's an eternal flame. And I wonder if you can think of any other special flames that we use today, like the one that you're talking about. So there's a waterfall in, in New York. Sometimes water is really hot. Sometimes water can be really hot. Can, can anybody else think of some fires that we have that are very special? The Olympic torch. Yeah. Um, and the, the Statue of Liberty, though, it's not a real fire. It's still kind of a symbolic fire that we have, right? In our churches at Christmas time, we just did this. We light four candles in an Advent wreath. And during the eight days of Hanukkah, we light the eight candles of the menorah. At Diwali, people set small lamps all around their houses. When Unitarian Universalists gather, we light our chalice, and we have a new fire uh, tradition that we started just today. Um, so this is our sacred fire. The flame gives us light and warmth, just like all fires. It's also a symbol to represent the light of learning. The ch our chalice is a symbol, too. A chalice is a really big cup that you can drink from. So when you're thirsty, the nicest thing somebody can do for you is give you something to drink, right? And when somebody comes over to your house, what do you do? You offer them a drink, right? Uh, so that's a way of welcoming, welcoming someone into your home. And so just like our sacred fires, our chalice is our way of kind of welcoming people into our congregation or our family, right? Um, long ago, Greeks and Romans put wine in their chalices. Other people put water or blood or milk or even melted butter in their chalices. The Celts believed that drinking from the cauldron of the goddess Caridwen would bring people back to life. Jesus shared a cup of wine with his friends, and many Christians still do this in their religion. We don't drink from our chalice, do we? No. Instead, our flame is in our chalice. Isn't that a nice image? So the light of learning, we put that in our welcoming vessel. Kind of a nice thing that we do, right? So not very long ago, the picture of a flame and a chalice was created. That's this here. You've seen this. We've all colored this before. Yeah. So that was created as a symbol to show refugees from the different countries that were having wars that you use were there to help them. And so when refugees saw the picture of the flame inside the chalice, it didn't matter what language they spoke, they understood what it meant, right? That's the fun thing about images is you can use them when language doesn't suffice. Um, so Unitarian Universalists started to use the flaming chalice in their worship services after that. The circle of the chalice helps keep the fire small. The flame doesn't blind us, it doesn't burn us. It helps give us light so we can learn. And the circle of our family helps keep us warm. Our family is home and our Unitarian Universalist family. We all help each other and we share food and drink with each other like today in our right? Um, and we, uh, we take care of each other because that's what families do. And we invite everyone to come be part of our family because the flaming chalice is the Unitarian Universalist symbol of love and acceptance. Our flaming chalice is also a symbol of learning. It's our symbol, the symbol of Unitarian Universalism. Now, do we want to, who wants to go out the candle today? Me! You can take it outside with it. I invite everybody to sing us out now. Oh, the fun of it is. Thank you. Let your
Please join me in the spirit of contemplation in whatever way feels right with these words from Ted Stromberger. Something has changed in me this winter. In the past, I've focused on how long winter is, how miserable I find it, and how it seems so interminable. But this winter, I find myself thinking instead that every day, every hour, every minute brings us that much closer to spring. We all experience wintry times when things seem harsh and frozen or muffled by layered shrouds of snow. It is helpful to remember that each day that dawns bleakly, each night that wraps its cold cloak around our hearts, brings us closer to that time of warm and vibrant sun. It is perhaps helpful to consider that turning towards spring is an active thing the earth, which seems so stable, in fact, flies quickly through space on its path that tilts us ever towards. So too, every memory we lay to rest, every truth in ourselves that we encounter and accept, each wrong act that we forgive, ushers us on towards our renewal. Blessed be. As Terry comes up to give the introduction to the offering, let me just offer an apology that your minister and social justice committee overlooked that this was a second Sunday. Because it doesn't feel like a second Sunday, does it? So we won't be collecting for social justice this week, but I'll get with the social justice committee and make sure that happens next week. A religious community is like a river formed from the many streams of our lives that meet and merge and flow to the sea. The offering that we take each Sunday isn't just a stale habit, it's an opportunity to recommit to this place and to this people. Our offering is an affirmation, a yes. When we give, we say yes to something we value. With our gifts freely given, may we say yes to the values of our faith. May our offering help us practice Unitarian Universalism within and beyond our, care, our congregation as tools to empower our mission. To make a donation online via PayPal, please visit AUF slash organization slash donate. Please indicate in the notes whether your donation is for your pledge or for the offering. If you're writing a check, please make the check payable to AUUF with a note on the memo about whether it is for the offering or your pledge, and drop it in the offering bowl or mail it to P.O. Box 669, Auburn, Alabama 36831. The offering will now be gratefully received.
reading from Elizabeth Hardy. People had always known that fire is special. Long, long before people made matches or candles or even made houses, people knew that fire was special. There was a great fire in the sky of the sun, which made the earth warm and made night into day. And there were the smaller fires that people made, fires that cooked their food and kept them warm and brought them light. People honored the fires because fire was special. Fire was far more than human. Fire has power. It can create and it can destroy. It can bring light and it can burn. It can create and it can destroy. Fire can be wonderful and fire can be terrible. We have to be careful with fire. And so people thought that fire was something sacred and holy. Some people even worshiped fire and said that fire was a deity, like a goddess or a god. Other people said fire wasn't actually the deity, but just meant that the deity was there. No matter what they believed, people all over the world gave fire a special place in their religions. They had fires in their homes, of course, to cook food and keep warm. They also had sacred fires in their temples. They had sacred lamps on their altars. They lit sacred bonfires outside hilltops and in the groves. They placed sacred torches near the graves of those who died. We still do this today. In Washington, D.C., near the tomb of the unknown soldier, burns an eternal flame that never goes out. In churches at Christmas time, many Christians light four candles on an Advent wreath. During the eight days of Hanukkah, Jews light eight candles of the, of the menorah. At Diwali, Hindus set small lamps all around the house. house. And when the Unitarian universities gather, we light the chalice. This is our sacred fire. What is it about fire that simultaneously captivates and scares us? What fire can purify and it can also destroy in a flash. Fire can warm and fire can also destroy that which warms. I'm aware that ever since my childhood, there have always been fires around and they've often been social centers, places where we gather, maybe after a long day of hiking or maybe even on a cold winter's night. Stories are told around fires. Sometimes they're fantastical stories of supernatural events, often known as ghost stories. And other times they're just remembrances of times past, of all the things that matter to us. It's fascinating to me that fires serve this function. In ancient times, the hearth fire was often a place of community where people gathered together in the winter. Families ate their meals together and had family time because that was the only place in the house that was warm during some of the harsh Northern European nights. And yet, even now when we have our fancy electric heaters, the tradition continues. As our, as our reading reminded us, gods have even been associated with the fire. The Irish, the Greeks, and the Romans all believed that there were gods associated with the hearth fire. And when something was associated with a god, that usually told you how important it was to those people. Today, I want to propose that our chalice is a hearth. <coughs> Here every week, we hear stories. We hear stories 
about pain, and we hear stories about joy. We hear stories that make us laugh and stories that break our hearts. And we may even get to witness a little toddler try to take all the joys and concerns stuff. <laughs> but the hearth holds it all. Just as the ancients used fire to show what's important, I propose that the chalice has become a way of delineating what's important to our fellowship. We don't have to light a chalice. In fact, not every Unitarian Universalist congregation does. If you're ever in Boston, stop by King's Chapel and see if you can find their chalice. And let me know if you actually do. As we begin our new year this year, every year a tradition that I've brought since I've been here is that of fire communion. This is when we take this hearth fire before us and we reflect on what the previous year was like and what we hope for the new year. And in turn, we bring our stories to it and recommit ourselves to how we hope the next year will be. Indeed, the idea that bringing stories forth like this is rooted in science. Narrative therapy tells us that we have some control over the stories we tell about ourselves, and indeed, by finding a different way to frame our experiences, we're able to live our stories in different ways. The way we tell our stories reveals the values that are important to our lives. If you think about the words we've used even in this service this morning, it will tell you a lot about what's important to our community. Just as the hearth fire of ancients once held their most sacred values, today we bring our most sacred values to the fore. Now, I'll be up front. This being the new year is quite arbitrary and more tradition than anything else. After all, what made this the new year and not June 1st? June 1st sounds like a warmer new year to me. Even if it's a little, a little arbitrary, I think the new year offers us the chance to take stock of where we've been in the last year and where we want to go. Many companies realize this too. That's why you're probably seeing lots of ads for gyms right now, trying to entice people to sign your contracts that they'll never go to again after about March. But there's power in thinking about how we could live our lives. And it's a chance to reflect on our lives, what we like about them, and what we wish were different. Today, I want to propose, as we come before our hearth fire, that we think about what are our hopes and dreams. In just a few moments, you'll have the opportunity to participate in our annual fire communion ritual. And you'll have an opportunity to give the fire what lies in your heart, quite literally. Well, maybe not the heart part. Please don't do that. <laughs> what is it you hope for 2023? Do you hope for a new relationship or a job? To go back to school or to finish school? Do you hope to cultivate new habits to make your life different in the new year? Do you hope to follow your call into the unknown? Unsure of where it will take you? Whatever your hope, let us tell our stories around this chalice today.
The fire is ready for them. Now, of course, if we just come and tell our stories today and then don't do anything else the rest of the year, it won't do much good. But we'll keep lighting the chalice every week. And we'll keep lighting the chalice for the stories that we know are in each of you, for the stories that our community holds, for the stories that have yet to be told. Let's make every week of our chalice a place where your stories are told and held sacred, whether they're told out loud into the microphone or held in the silence. The chalice can be a way of warming us in the winters of our lives. Because even in the winter, you'll find the tracks of life. Tracks that are looking for the nourishment that will keep, a, that will keep them alive until the spring. So whatever your stories are telling you this morning, let us together create the possibility of the loved community and the hearing and the redeeming of our life narratives. May it be so. This new year calls us forward, filled with mystery. As we turn toward that new year, we take a final glimpse into the past year and reckon with all that is held for us. When you came in today, you should have received a piece of flash paper and a writing instrument. If you did not receive a piece of flash paper or writing instrument, please raise your hand and someone will get you one. Now, as you've got your flash paper and your pen, I want you to take a moment to reflect on what you might leave behind today. Flash paper is specially treated paper that evaporates in fire, leaving no ash or residue. Although, as one of my colleagues reminded me this week, please don't take this home and put it away in a drawer somewhere and forget about it. It will spontaneously combust when it dries up. <laughs> now, I want you to consider what you might leave behind today, burning it brightly so that it changes form and disappears. What parts of our lives, what things, ideas, people, ways of living have become obstacles to us becoming the people we want to be, the people we need to be? What's holding you back? What's getting in the way of you living as fully as you'd like to? What might you burn away? What will you relinquish? I want you to invite you to write a word or two on your flash paper to represent what you want to leave behind. And a reminder, no one will see this. Now, 
I want to invite you forward to put your paper into our flame that is lit down here. The flames will take it very quickly, so don't hold on to it. <laughs> As the flame takes the paper, let it go. Or if you're more comfortable with me burning it, please either let me know when you come up or raise your hand, and the fire will do the rest. We do have water if things go awry. So <laughs>
some of her budding magicians the way you tossed it in the air. <laughs> If the past held joy and growth for you, may that sweetness continue to bless you. If the past held pain and bitterness, may you be relieved of those burdens and renewed for the journey ahead. Let us look to the new with hope, with curiosity about its many unknowns and with faith in our strength to navigate it with grace. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as you're willing and able and join us in singing our closing hymn number 1060 in the Till Hymnal as we sing of hope and joy. service for our monthly potluck here in the sanctuary. This is an opportunity to chat with people about the service or just how their week went. Whether you brought a dish or not, you are welcome. If you are not signed up by our email list, please make sure to do so to receive updates about ways to connect. You can find information on signing up at our website at uuf.org slash subscribe. Do we have any written announcements to do? Okay. I invite anyone with spoken announcements to come forward at this time. Cindy Ranky, I'm your Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Uh, whatever it is. <laughs> Service Committee um, Chair um, <laughs> and also slightly brain dead today. Um, I have 
cards and a couple other things, including a CD donated by my husband because he bought two of them <laughs> on the UUSC market table. Anything on the table that you would like, just put in a donation and pay. The other thing that um, I've, uh, I've got is to raise money for the guest guest our table for UUSC's annual um, um, fund drive for social justice, human rights, uh, people suffering around the world. Uh, if you'd like a portrait of your fairy godmother, personal views, spiritual protector, there's a, there's a sample up there. I will make one for you for a donation of forty dollars or more. Just talk to me, and we can do that. Good morning. My first time at the mic. I am a new uh, parishioner, so I uh, am so happy to be here. <laughs> Along with that, I am proposing to um, schedule a drum circle at five o'clock and a five to be followed with a yoga class at 5.30. Remember, it's proposed. 5.30 on Tuesdays, and hopefully you will all be able to join us. It's meant to focus energy, to drive us together with music, and then end with an hour-long yoga class um, providing all levels of yoga and providing meditation at the end. I want to describe myself as a yogi. I've been practicing since 1994. My friend Lisa will be joining me, who's been practicing for many years, and we're all very certified in this practice of yoga. I am 73 years old, and I believe in yoga. So, <laughs> anything, namaste. I would hope to see you and make it a lifelong practice for you. Again, I, it is proposed, but Peter has it in his hands, and we'll see where we go from there. Thank you. Hey, I'm Billy, and I'm your VP of Finance for this year. Canvas is coming. Ooh, uh. <laughs> That's basically all I got. Um, we're going to go through a lot of the same things we do every year for the Pledge Drive activities, but we also, since we're not quite started yet, have lots of opportunity for creative input. If you have a thing that you want to do for the fellowship or a way that we can bring in funding, please come talk to me. Uh, ideas are welcome. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Tameskin and I'm um, a member of the Committee on Ministry and I'm going to read an um, announcement from the committee. Um, this is a shorter version of uh, those on the list I've already received, so please apologize. Uh, I apologize for if you feel it's, it's, it's long, but I shorten it. <laughs> the AUF COM Committee on Ministry has been leading various activities towards reviewing our values, identity, and future aspirations with the intent of revitalizing the AUF mission and vision statement. We also have requested input recently based upon some proposed statements for each. Based on the feedback we have received, we feel, uh, we have, based on the feedback we have received, we feel it would be best at this point to request more participation and have additional conversations with the congregation. We are especially seeking individuals who are willing to work with us over the next several weeks in the following ways. Uh, but any input is welcome. One, to determine the next process to be used to craft and vote on our final revitalized mission and vision statement. Two, contribute to the formulation of the ultimate statements that will be presented to the fellowship for voting. As a simple background and reminder, both mission, state, mission and vision are measuring sticks for all what the fellowship does and the organizing statements around which the fellowship operates and allocate its limited resources. Mission and vision should be owned by the fellowships, membership, committees, and the staff, and should be reviewed and revised at intervals. 
Therefore, Eurocom is asking for volunteers to join this effort. If you are passionate about this effort and willing to partake, please contact any of the COM members and speak to us after the services as well. Our COM members are Marsha Rossi, Aisha Ram, Ralph Banks, Samaskin Samuel, and Reverend Rod Power. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Noriko. I am speaking on behalf of Diana's Pantry uh, duo, that's uh, Amy Kaiser and me. And um, again, on behalf of the recipients, thank you so much for your continued support for this program. Diana's Pantry is a supplemental program for uh, open for fellowship members and friends. Application forms are in that basket, if anybody knows um, if somebody's in need. And Amy and I would work with them uh, confidentially. The names will not be released to anybody else. So please feel secure to do so. Um, today, uh, during the potluck, we are going to draw a um, raffle for the Lucy's, the restaurant, new restaurant, Lucy's um, $100 gift card. So if you haven't purchased or you went to buy and increase your chance of winning, we see Amy Kaiser. And the price is? Um, $2 for one, uh, three tickets for five. Yeah, $2 for one, three tickets for five. So please see um, Amy Kaiser for that before the drawing. And the next Sunday is the third <coughs> Sunday of the month, and we are going to collect items, food items, and a list of the items that we are looking for uh, on the email before. I'm going to send it again before um, next Sunday, but also it is um, pasted on the basket. So um, please help us to distribute. Okay, go ahead. Did you mention when the drawing will be? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The drawing will be during the potluck today. Okay, during the potluck today. So if you wanted to see Amy Kaiser right away after this announcement and service. Thank you. This Friday is game night at the Bush Center. Uh, on the order of service, it has it printed as seven to nine, so it is six to nine. Uh, and we play all sorts of games. If you want to play bridge, come play bridge. If you want to come play a uh, like an RPG game, come play one of those. We have those. Uh, bring, yes, if we can do word games. We can do riddles. We can do puzzles. Anything you want. It depends on who comes. Uh, also, the fourth Tuesday is Instrumental Jam, if you or someone you know would be interested in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, please join us now for our Sunday dinner kitchen. <laughs> by Lois Van Leer. Having let go, set our intentions, named our curiosity, committed our energies, and given ourselves over to lives of balance, purpose, and meaning, let us begin again in love. Amen, blessed be, and go in peace. <laughs> 